Hey mama, about 80% of moms stop breastfeeding before they wanted to or planned to, and that's a really high number. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what might be contributing to that statistic and killing mama's breastfeeding journey prematurely, and then my top three tips that will help you breastfeed as long as you want. I'm Bridget Tyler. I'm a certified breastfeeding counselor, childbirth educator, and birth doula, and a mama as well, and it's my goal to empower families to thrive from pregnancy through birth and into parenthood. If you're new here, and you haven't subscribed to this community of empowered and educated parents, make sure you do and hit the bell so you're notified each time a new video comes your way. Okay, let's start from the beginning, right after birth. It is so important that breastfeeding or some kind of breast milk expression with a pump or even your hands is done within the first hour after birth. By initiating milk expression within the first hour after birth, you're more likely to produce more milk in the week following birth and through the following weeks. One of the big factors women stop breastfeeding early over is because they don't think they have enough milk. So if right off the bat you're expressing milk, that's going to help prevent that from the get-go. Now, sometimes expressing milk in the first hour isn't possible, like in the event of a C-section. So the important thing is to start off as soon as possible. The second thing is separation from your baby. When baby is close to mama, breastfeeding is more likely to be initiated. This is why keeping baby in the same room as you at the hospital or in your home and baby wearing is so valuable because it allows you to respond to your baby's needs quickly and also your hormones when you are close to baby actually encourage milk to release. If you have to be separated from your baby due to, let's say, a NICU stay or you have to go back to work, make it an intentional effort to spend time with them and pump when you are away. Anytime you'd be breastfeeding your baby, you should be pumping if you're not with them. Number three, not doing skin to skin might kill your breastfeeding journey. In those early hours and days, skin to skin should be done as often as possible. If baby doesn't want to nurse, even putting their skin on your skin can help with breastfeeding. Even as baby gets older, during those intentional times that you spend with your baby, bring them skin to skin with you. If you feel like your milk supply is dwindling, go on a breastfeeding vacation. And this doesn't mean vacation from breastfeeding. It means a vacation revolving around breastfeeding. You Usually that means staying home, maybe even staying in your bed all day or all weekend, eating full meals and spending uninterrupted time with your baby and doing loads of skin to skin and nursing or pumping. Number four is a poor latch. A latch that is painful and shallow that you hear clicking throughout the feed or see milk dribbling out of your baby's mouth is a poor latch. Your baby's latch is fundamental to your baby getting enough milk and your body making enough milk. If your baby isn't gaining enough weight, if they're not soiling their diaper often, they seem cranky and lethargic, if their latch feels painful throughout each feed, their latch should be assessed by a lactation consultant, not a pediatrician, because pediatricians are not often trained enough in this area to really scope out an oral issue that's affecting latch, such as tongue tie. If you want a guide on how to get a good latch, check out this video up here. And if it's not working, Google lactation consultants near me or ask your pediatrician to put you in contact with one at the hospital. Number five is supplementing with formula. Parents are often quickly pushed towards supplementing with formula without realizing how detrimental it can be to their milk supply if they aren't proactive about also protecting their milk supply. If baby is drinking milk from another source, mama should be pumping. So if your breast feeding and then supplementing with formula after a feed, you should also be pumping after that feed. If you've been told to supplement and your goal is to continue breastfeeding and even wean out formula eventually, work with a lactation specialist. Another thing to be mindful of with supplementation is that just because baby does take a bottle after a feeding doesn't always mean that they are necessarily hungry for it. Baby's natural reflex is to suck, so if you put a bottle in their mouth, they're likely going to drink from it. The sixth thing that could be killing your breastfeeding journey is stress and anxiety. Stress and anxiety is associated with a shorter duration of breastfeeding because when stress or anxiety is present, especially over a long period of time, adrenaline interferes with oxytocin, which is what drives our milk to release. I know personally that when I'm feeling stressed or anxious, it takes significantly longer 
for my milk to let down. And I have to take deep breaths. I speak affirmations over myself and look at my baby to bring down that stress and really focus on the present moment. The seventh thing is neuromusculoskeletal dysfunction in baby, which is just basically your baby's bodily system is not working in their favor. When mamas say, my baby is just having the hardest time breastfeeding, they seem so uncomfortable, they're so tense and tight, the latch is bad no matter what I do, my response is take them to the chiropractor. Baby's been scrunched up in mama's tummy for nine months, and the process of any kind of birth is traumatic on their little body and system, which can be the cause of restriction that's causing a breastfeeding issue. A chiropractor can address these restrictions and help bring balance to the nervous system to improve baby's milk removal ability. Number eight is skipping middle of the night feeds or pump sessions. Not every mama needs to do middle of the night feeds or pump sessions, but usually in the beginning months, mama should want one, be doing them because baby needs the calories, and two, because it's going to help with milk production. Mamas produce the most milk in the very early morning between 2 to 5 a.m. because of a peak in prolactin. So if your milk supply is dipping, this is a great time to feed your baby or throw in an extra pump session. Our ninth is an unsupportive system. It is incredible how the people around you can impact you from your loved ones to acquaintances to medical professionals to strangers. If you have people close to you downplaying your breastfeeding challenges, if you have grandparents telling you to just give baby a bottle, if you feel ashamed by breastfeeding in public, if your pediatrician is making you worry about baby's weight and saying you should supplement, et cetera, all of these are all things that can deter you from your breastfeeding goals. And sometimes it's good information worth listening to, and other times it's just not. You can't control what they say, think, or do, but you can control what you say to yourself what you think and what you do to help yourself reach your breastfeeding goals. And 10 is feeding by the clock. The more you bring your baby to the breast, the more oxytocin receptors are built in the breast, which helps with milk quantity and breastfeeding duration. Let baby empty the breast before moving them to the next one and bring them to the breast when they want to feed, even if a feed was just recently given. Even non-nutritive sucking is going to help with supply. So those are 10 common things that can kill mama's milk supply. And now here are my top three ways to breastfeed as long as you want. Number one, know why you're breastfeeding. I've had conversations with parents who genuinely thought that formula was more nutritious than breast milk, and that just isn't the case. Apart from nutrition, there are multiple reasons to breastfeed. It's cheaper, it has protective qualities for baby's immature immune system, it reduces mama's risk of breast, cervical, and thyroid cancer, and others. There are so many reasons why you might want to breastfeed, and knowing your specific why is going to be your anchor when things get tough, and often they do start off challenging, but mama, trust me when I tell you it does get better. Number two is find breastfeeding support. Whether it's a hired lactation counselor or a free support group like La Leche League, having professional and peer support to help encourage you or troubleshoot breastfeeding issues will make a world of difference in your journey. And three, when in doubt, do skin to skin. Skin to skin is so beneficial even beyond breastfeeding. Skin to skin is one of the best ways to connect and tune into your baby. And sometimes that's just what you need to figure out breastfeeding and make it work and last. Ask your baby what they need and listen. Look at them, watch the way they move, listen to their cry, comfort them, and then ask yourself what your intuition is telling you. This is such a powerful and beautiful way to navigate your breastfeeding journey through the ups and downs that will build up your confidence in yourself and your baby. Mama, breastfeeding can be tough, but it is so worth the work. I believe in you and there is support for you to accomplish your breastfeeding journey whatever that looks like. Thanks for being with me in this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.